All right. Hello, guys. How's everybody doing? Hello, France, Iraq, Dave, <laughs> India. Hope you guys are all doing well this Friday. Um, I, just to be honest with you, I'm flying solo. I'm here. I'm, I'm by myself. So if I get behind on responding or forget to look up, I apologize in advance. Um, hold up one second. Got a little bit of an echo right now is happening. There we go. All right. All right, let's, let's say hi to a couple more people. Gamborg, welcome back. Studio Q, Dwayne. Hey, Dwayne, how's it going? Um, wow, yeah, lots of Iceland. That's, that's, oh, no, Thori, how are you doing? You've been here before. Michelle's here somewhere in Boulder. <laughs> uh, South Africa, San Antonio, Texas. Got people from all over the place chiming in. All right, so here's, here's the idea. Whoa. Suyash says it's 11.30 p.m. in India. Way to go. That's commitment. That's, that's, uh. That's dedication right there. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so again, if you guys let me know if something doesn't sound good, doesn't look good, I will, uh, well, I may acknowledge that there's a problem. I can't guarantee I'll be able to fix it, <laughs> but I'll do my best. I'll do what I can. Uh, uh, so we're gonna, oh, whoa. Ivan had to one up you there. You said it's 2.02 uh, 02 a.m. in the Philippines that he's he's viewing, so. He, uh, you helped, you held that latest title Suyash for a couple minutes and then, uh, it got swiped by Ivan. So, uh, Toomey Brothers likes what I do. Thank you very much. Hello in, in Portugal, Fabio. Uh, Red Sea. It's, uh, was that 8 p.m. in France? 2009? Something like that? Yeah. So it's, it's night. I get it. You guys are staying up late. I better make this worth it. I hear every word you're saying. Gotcha. Um, again, I will respond to what you say, not necessarily do anything about it. No, I'm kidding. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have some fun. Um, so on that note, let's, let's make something. So I did do something. It worked out pretty well last time. Uh, I got a, somebody asked if I could post the, my, I, mean, I, was, I was having a problem with, uh, Curvaloft, and somebody said, why don't you post that model on the forum? And I did, and uh, not only did a lot of people go back to that model, that thread after the post, but actually during the post, a lot of people went and checked stuff out, and uh, it worked out really well. So I got ahead of the curve, and I actually created a, uh, we can actually take a look at it right here. I created a topic beforehand, live modeling the Empire State Building, so we can actually hand off files and that kind of thing from here. So if you guys come up with a good reference photo for a section I'm working on, something like that, you can go ahead and post it right in this thread and I will be able to take a look at it. So with that, let's go ahead and hop in here. So the, the Empire State Building was actually a recommendation. Somebody uh, asked for it during one of our threads. So. I uh, went and looked up, There's, it is a cool looking building. It's got a couple of neat parts. The, the nice thing about it is it's not like a lot of size scrapers, it's not the exact same profile all the way up, but it is symmetrical. The left, right, front, front, back do more or less mirror each other. Um, but I figured rather than just modeling a big clump, <laughs> we can do a little better. We can actually go in and maybe stick some components in there, make each floor a component, repeat them, that sort of thing. I think that'll be, It'll be pretty cool. It'll be uh, an interesting model. It'll be a big model. Uh, and that was the other thing. Let's model life size. Let's make this a nice big model. The other thing that's really cool is uh, this thing right here. This is the mooring mast. So the top, I can't remember how many floors 
are actually like uh, a stairway and uh, uh, there's a dirigible mooring mast up there. So you could, you know, fly your Zeppelin up and just connect up to the Empire State Building. So I don't know if it ever happened or not. I'm not sure what the whole timeline on that and the Hindenburg thing was, but uh, uh, it's there. It's, it's what it's for. It's actually called the mooring mast and the plans. Um, so we're going to actually throw that on here too. And uh, we'll model that. That's, it's cool because like I said, it's, it's got these cool wing shapes and uh, it's almost oct octagonal when it gets to the top as opposed to being a, a rectangle most of the way up. So it'll be a fun model. Um, just want to let you guys know we do listen to what you ask about us modeling. Sometimes, like I said, we get those general ideas, which is awesome. Those are nice. Um, and then when you guys come up with specifics, we do listen to those too. So hopefully this is going to be a good one. We'll see. Um, it really comes down to how well the, the plans are going to work for me. So speaking of plans, let me show you guys what I got. So I went and downloaded a bunch of images. And I was able to find, this is like on a museum website or something like that, but these look like these uh, could be the original plans for the Empire State Building. So here I have the, the ground floor, uh, 197 foot 5 inches by 424 foot 9.5 inches. So uh, it's big. It's a, it's a big building. So I want to see how well these plans work out for me. <laughs> we'll, we'll just see what happens and uh, we'll, we'll start. So uh, I'm going to just, with that, I am going to hop in. So I have to zoom out a little bit. And uh, there's a couple pictures I want to bring in. I want to bring in, I might bring this first one in. I want to see how it looks as a watermark. Um, one, of the, one of the images is the profile. So the it shows how many floors between the changes in profile, that kind of thing. Uh, and elevation would be, would, would be the thing. Let me do this. Let me, let me actually hop over here. Anybody who wants to follow along. And I can let me just upload what I got right here. So if you want to copy these, just hop onto our forum and I will throw up, I'll just throw up everything I got. You know, out of context, that could have come across as not too pleasant. I'm going to upload everything I got. <laughs> all right. There we go. Those are all the images that I have. So hop in. Uh, Take a look. Like I said, some of these are old pages, and it's really cool. And then uh, one, one towards the end is more of a modern uh, illustration, visualization kind of thing. And I can't vouch for how well any of this lines up to the real Empire State Building. I've been in the Empire State Building, did not have my tape measure on me at the time, so I'm assuming this is all going to line up about proper. So with that, let's, uh, let's assume it's all perfect. Assumptions are fun. All right. Um, cool. Uh, so yeah, so I have one of these images. I'm going to go to my styles, and I'm going to go to my watermark, and I'm going to upload, bring one of these images in. Um, i trying to remember which one. Well, let's, let's try this illustration. It looked like it was fairly clear. That's not quite useful. I can't really read that. So this is where uh, two screens come in very useful. So I, what I'll probably end up doing is actually just hopping back and forth between reference images or I may import them one at a time and throw them on the ground. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to start by importing uh, my floor one. 
just going to import that and slide it over. I'm just use it as a reference. Um, appreciate the comment on the green screen, Jerry. I actually threw a big hot light in my face, and that seems to help with the green screen a little bit. Fortunately, it does make it rather warm in this room that is not known for its air conditioning. So if I start sweating, it's not because I'm nervous, it's because I'm hot. Um, there we go. John Higgins says, in September 1931, a privately owned dirigible docked for a mere three minutes in a 40 mile per hour wind. And there's the history of docking with the Empire State Building. And this, I'll just throw this out now, this is my Space Mouse from 3D Connection. This is the Space Mouse Enterprise. Not a requirement for SketchUp, but if you do a lot of presentation or a lot of modeling, it's worth checking out because it is a big time saver. So, all right, with that, I'm gonna scoot Mark over. He's gonna help us keep scale. <laughs> all right, we're gonna start with a rectangle. Uh, so I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool, start this lower left corner and start dragging out like this. Um, and I'm gonna type in 424, 9.5, wait, start again, 424 feet, 9.5 comma, 197 feet space five. Whew. All right, there's our ground floor. Now what I gotta take a look at, because if I import the next one, this is when I make a joke about how it pretty much uh, built itself from here. Floors two through five look like this. second to the fifth floor. So they are, well, how about that? They're the same. Could have, could have saved a page there, couldn't you? One through five. Um, my only question is, I wonder if, I don't know if they're different heights. So this is where I do want to, I'm gonna hop over here and open up this illustration. Again, I know this is modern. This isn't the original plans, I get it, but uh, here we go. So the first five floors account for 73 foot six. And of course you can tell from this picture, they don't look like they're all the same height, but uh, we're gonna, well, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna wing it. We're gonna do some stuff. <laughs> All right, so this is the important part. All right, so 73.6 inches, 73 foot six inches. So I'm gonna just start with that. I'm gonna put 73.6, no, 73.5 feet. All right, and I'm gonna, for right now, I'm just gonna group that. I was thinking about how, how best to approach this. Cause like I said, it is uh, symmetrical, left and right, front and back are the same. So this is actually a perfect opportunity to uh, model just a quadrant. So if I just, mount, I'm only, I'm only gonna worry about the exterior. I didn't find interior plans. I'm not gonna go and put interior walls in. We only have a couple hours, so. Um, what I was thinking about is starting with a mass. So I wanna start with just get the shapes in there, uh, get the heights, get the, the profiles in, and I'll build my way up first. Um, then maybe come back and actually model the floors as components because I could do some arrays of windows, that sort of thing, and then actually build those as components that will repeat themselves. Uh, so it'll be a bigger model, but if we model it all out with components, um, it should be fairly quick and it should stay pretty snappy, pretty, pretty easy to uh, maneuver through. So, um, so I think that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, so I'm going to, so this is my first five floors. Um, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to double click in here and I'm going to draw a line at the middle and another line across like that, just to indicate where the center is. Cause as this builds up, it does all work around the middle. So, so the next floor, the sixth floor is going to actually have a different profile but it's gonna come off of that middle point. So I'll do that, I'm gonna go grab plan number four. So I'm gonna import, oh hey, you know what I should do? 
I can't believe that I'm 15 minutes in and I haven't seen the S word come up from you guys. What is it? Come on, help me out here. It's under file. <laughs> I'm going to save this. Um, this was kind of funny because uh, I was typing uh, Empire State Building as I was, I was making plans for this model. And we're trying to get ahead on what we're posting. So we're actually trying to come up with multiple ideas. So we'll be a little, little ways ahead. So it's not uh, a lot of times we come up with the ideas of what we're going to model on, say, Monday, Tuesday of a week. Uh, so we tried to get ahead of, of some here. And uh, so I was downloading some reference images and put them in a, a folder that said ESB, um, Empire State Building. That's where that came from. In case you guys couldn't crack the code of my my shortening the name. But another thing I was looking at, because I found some cool machining, uh, I, I found a site that had these cool uh, machine images, or machining images, so like plans for machining things. And one of the things they had was lightsabers, and they had, uh, you know, plans for machining a lightsaber hilt. And I downloaded one of those, and it was Luke's ESB uh, lightsaber. So immediately my Empire State Building and my lightsaber, their names conflicted. I, I thought that was kind of funny that uh, those are fairly, two fairly different things to model, but they ended up with the same name in my folder. I enjoyed that story. I don't know if you guys had any enjoyment there, but uh, yeah, so maybe that's a shadow of things to come. Anyhow, focus. I'm going to go ahead and import my next image. And here's where we're actually going to, we're actually see some stuff here. This is where so we get to floor six. And all right, so now we actually have, we got a profile. We're doing some things here. Um, I think what I might do is I'm going to start with a rectangle that is this bigger shape, and then we'll go in and uh, knock, notch it out. Um, yeah, so. I'm going to go ahead and grab another rectangle. I'm going to hit the modifier key. So I'm going to draw it from the center. I'm going to line the center up with this point right here. I'm going to pull it out here. I remember my numbers. This is never going to work. <laughs> All right. Uh, 3098 by 1648. I can remember that. So we're going to go 309 foot 8, comma, 1648. All right, there's my next rectangle. I'm actually going to scale this way up so I can see those, those numbers. All right, again, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to try just drawing a quadrant this time and see how that works. Um, depends on what my numbers look like. So 15 foot 6 down, so we'll come here, 15 foot 6, and that is 37 4, and that goes up, and then it was very apparent that I'm only doing a quarter, in case I, lest I forget. Alright, so from there, that comes across 71.6. It comes down 15 foot one. That amazes me. It's something the size. I know skyscrapers are, you know, big buildings like this are a thing. They're not like weird or anything. But it surprises me that there's such small increments in them. I don't know why. I don't know why that surprises me. It probably shouldn't. Um, I guess I just think if you're building something as big as a skyscraper or a big, huge building like this, you keep everything round to the big increments, right? Everything a foot or more. <laughs> All right, so to flip this, to mirror this, I'm just going to hit mirror, flip it over like that. I'm going to delete that and then grab this shape, same thing. I go to mirror, or I'm sorry, rotate, flip it over. 
So one of the issues I'm going to run into here, working off of the this shape down below, it has this X in the middle, and that's I'm using it intentionally. But if I was to come in here and just swipe across this line to erase it, of course, I'd erase that group also. So what I might do is as I work my way up, I'll just lock each of these levels. That way I'm not going to worry about messing with them at all. So with that, I now have my shiny. Let's call it shiny. Look at that shininess. It's so shiny. All right. I need to push pull that up now. So I'm going to hop back over here. 177 foot 6. 177 foot 6. All right. And once again, before I close this up, I'm going to put my X in here. Triple click. Make it a group. And then I'm going to, again, lock it. All right. I don't actually need these pages to stay in the model, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hold on to them for the time being in case I, I come back in here. Um, so next one's the 21st floor. File, import, 21. All right, so same thing. It's got a profile that comes in here. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna scale that way up. Yeah. You know, it's funny how spoiled you get by the tools you use. The fact that, you know, on my, on my normal, at my desktop, I have my laptop and then an external monitor. And anytime I do any kind of modeling like this, I have my reference on one screen and then SketchUp on the other. And not having it, you can definitely feel it. So you gotta come up with unique solutions like this. Scale your drawing till it's, you know, a city block <laughs> wide. All right, another rectangle. I'm going to start from the middle. Hit the modifier key to draw from the center. And this one's going to be 424 foot 9.5, comma. What's the height on this thing? 164.8. Something went not right there. Oh, I used this number. Undo. All right, second tries at charm. Let's do that again. <laughs> 235, comma, <laughs> 164 foot eight. Third, see I had to go and try to make my own uh, thing up there by saying, Second try is a charm, because everybody knows the third try is a charm. So now I'm on my third try. Third try is the only chance I get. If it doesn't work, I just have to call it a day. Foot. <laughs> uh, one, 64 foot eight. Yay! All right, we did it. Um, so with this, I'm going to go ahead and draw my quadrant lines again so I can get rid of all the rest of this stuff. All right, so this is my quadrant. This seems, I'm assuming that they're not telling me what this dimension is because it's the same. Yeah, 92 feet. So I can draw a rectangle right here and just get rid of this piece. And then over here, if I come this way, what do we got? 71 foot six, that's, the, that's all the way to the outside edge. And then it comes down 53 foot two and steps in two foot five inches. And I'll bring that down. All right, so that is my quarter profile. So I can real quick copy. Copy, get rid of these lines on the inside and I'm ready to push pull that up. Um, Jim, I would need a quarter dimensions if I was drawing from the center and only drawing a quarter, which is actually, or half dimensions, that's what I could do. Uh, Jim called out that I should use half dimensions. If I drew from the center this way, then yeah, I would use half and half. Um, I drew it from the center out, uh, so I didn't need to do the math. 
that's that's really where that all came from. All right, this is coming up 49 foot six. Uh, that was a short one. All right, draw my lines in there to keep it lined up again. Make that a new group and lock it. And I'm gonna scale this image back down. So once again, as I'm flying through here doing this, this is never the only way to do it. This is never, there's not only one way to use SketchUp. This is just uh, what I think of at the time. So if you guys wanna yell out a better way to do something or give me a tip like Jim, Jimmy just gave me, I, I love it, please, please help me. All right. So here we go, that was up to level 24, now we're at level 25 to 29. Scale that way up, bring it up here. And one more rectangle, not one more, one of a few more rectangles. Let's see if I can get this one on the first try. Prep myself. Whew. Okay. 230 foot two, comma, 134 foot six. Nailed it. All right, yeah, that, that makes sense. Like, see it lines up right there? All right, so, raise extra lines around the outside. And I can draw my quadrant. So let's see, what do we got on this one? We got a 22, yep. So I'm gonna come over 22 feet. And from that point, wherever that point is, I'm gonna come down 19 foot six. Almost a square. All right, so there's, there's my quarter profile. Once again, real quick, I'm just using the arrow keys to snap to the green axes. Option key to copy, flip it over, grab both these, red arrow key, option key to copy, let it snap, and there's our next profile. All right, let's see how tall that one is. Uh, 63. All right, once again, oh, oh, got to draw my lines first. My registration points, would you? Would you buy that? Sounds, my key points, I don't know what you'd call that. Center point, origin, middle. <laughs> Crossing lines. All right, I'm gonna make that a new group and I am going to, again, lock it. All right, we're gonna shrink that down. And then, Import, what are we on now? Uh, 30, level 30? At one, at a, there's a point at which, is that right, is that the right? Yeah, okay. There's a point at which I couldn't find any more pages because after a certain height, uh, it just turns into a rectangle and goes all the way up, so. Um, I think that might be after this layer. All right, so I'm gonna say rectangle again, option clicking in the middle, start pulling it up. And what I do when I draw a rectangle is I can never, there's rules to it, but I can never remember which way is gonna be which, which is the first dimension, which is the second. So I usually draw out a long skinny rectangle and look at my dimensions in the lower right corner, or let's see, that would be right down there. Um, and look at what the bigger dimension is. So right now it says 166 foot by 41 foot. So I know that this is the longer dimension. So I put my 185 foot 10 in there. And then my shorter dimension of 134 foot four second. Whoop. Somehow I drew an arc. All right, let's try that again. <laughs> Who, who was paying attention was, I was trying to tell you guys something and didn't pay attention to what I was doing. All right, let's try it again. 185 foot 10, comma, 
34.4. See? Second try is a, char try is a charm, like I said. Um, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat on this one. Given that it only comes in on one side, I'm just going to draw that shape. So I'm going to come this way, 66 foot 1. Draw my line down, 19 foot over 53 foot 8, and then back up. And then just take that shape from the center point, mirror that over, and then I can just delete this extra line on the outside like that. And I got my, my shape there. All right, so that was level 30, 32, 71st floor, 502 feet, 6 inches. 502 foot 6. You know, maybe it's just that I'm not used to working on things of this size, but I would like, as soon as I get in hundreds of feet, I, I get kind of like, ooh, you know, kind of goosebumpy. That's, that's a big number. That's a big piece of, uh, of building there. All right, so I happen to have, I, I do have another monitor here with the forum open, and the top image on the forum is the uh, elevation imagery, and it looks like it has this step here, which is the first couple floors, and it steps up, comes in, there's a little teeny step there, and this, and then it goes all the way up, and then it looks like that's where it starts, uh, that's where the rectangle's at, um, as opposed to the H profile. Probably an excellent time to save. Um, I will go ahead and get my middle point here, registration. I'm going to make that into a group and lock that as well. All right, so I've got a whole bunch of locked geometry right now. Scale this back down. Those are the only planned pages I have. Think about how big these would be. I mean, that's like, look at, look at Mark here. It's like the size of a, be a big piece of paper laying on the floor. Um, all right, so there we go. Um, I'm gonna flip back over to my image here. Let's zoom out just a touch. So that takes us up to the 71st floor, right? Yeah. And it looks like we do have some change in profile, but I believe I'm going to go open another I'm going to go open another picture because this one right here doesn't have any dimensions on it. Awesome. Um, it looks like got 86 foot 10 of a smaller profile well or 108 you know whatever you feel best about <laughs> um, all right I'm gonna throw this out to you guys yeah All right, so see, that's where that rectangle comes up. That was a spot I was thinking of. That goes up for a while, but then it looks like it shrinks again. Does anybody have any good, anybody come across any good pictures of that they could throw up on the forum or give me dimensions? I just need to know what this floor, what the, the shape of this floor is. I have an inclination. I have an idea of what I would like to do there, but I'll uh, give an opportunity for the right solution to present itself first. Um, but basically, so we have a rectangle that comes up here, 59, no, so right here, right? So 108 feet. My thought is something like this. I'm gonna take, if I was to do something like that, Mm 
that would give me that shape, which gives me the same dimension around. I kind of feel like that's what I want to use there. Um, and of course, we, we're just doing the, the initial massing right now, so we can always come back and change that. But that goes up, uh, let's see, 108 feet. That was unimpressive. It didn't seem like a very big push pull. That is 108 feet though. All right, so from there, we have a, one more profile at least where it shrinks down again. Nope, just a group. Um, so that goes up to there. So we do have, there is a smaller section again. Oh, I wonder if that's on the mooring uh, image that I have. Ha ha! Nope, that is just the, that's just from here on up. So I still have this 80, no, this 81st floor to 85th floor, so the 84 floors here look like they're smaller. Um, well, here's what we could do. We're going to use the tools that we have available to us. I'm going to go ahead and file. I'm going to actually, I'm going to get rid of these pages right now. And file import. And I'm going to pull in that desktop image, that image I was just looking at, the one I was pulling the, the vertical dimensions off of. And I'm going to scale it. Draw a nice big dimension. I'm going to go, I'm going to use this uh, 502 foot 6. Just draw a line right on that dimension line. I'm going to drag, grab a group together, that image and the line I just drew. Make it a group. Enter that group. I don't want to resize anything on the outside, so I don't want to resize the rest of my model. I just want to resize what's in here by grabbing the tape measure and clicking from here to here and telling it that is 502 foot 6. All right, so there we go. We can see we got to right here. And now I could actually, so what is this dimension right here? We'll say it's 6 feet. And uh, because I don't know any better, I'm going to offset symmetrically. So I'm going to pull this in six foot. And that goes up. Oh, that's why. There we go. That goes up 59 feet. Another 17 foot, 17 foot floor. This would be the penthouse. I'll say that's four feet. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna put another rectangle right here. Offset that four feet. Whoops! I didn't lock. I didn't lock the last last group. Locking is a temporary thing too. In case you guys have never used that, uh, it's not gonna stay locked forever. 17 foot, that would be the penthouse, I believe. And then uh, 404 more feet. <laughs> Again, I, I, it's just me, That's, it's crazy. All right, that is to here. I'm gonna take that, make that a group and lock it. And then I'll draw another rectangle. And this one's just gonna be a placeholder. I'm gonna offset four feet again. And then offset, push pull that up 404.
that was on, that was on for for that was inches. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna grab this because. We know we'll be doing stuff up there. All right, so that is our massing. That is our initial massing of the entire thing. Um, I'm going to make that a group also. All right, and I'll just for fun, I'll go ahead and lock that too. Okay, so now what we can do, now we can start working our way up with a little bit more dimension. And I, I, I do mean a little bit of dimension. We're gonna go in and we're gonna put some detail in here. Um, I'm not going to go crazy with the detail uh, just because, well, mostly due to time. I mean, this, this would definitely be a fun building to spend some time on, to really dig into. But uh, right now, I'm just gonna focus on uh, just getting a model in the time we got. Um, so, I'm going to start with the, the lowest level, and I'm going to unlock it and enter the group. I don't need to see the rest of this model right now, so I'm going to go to component and hide rest of model. I no longer need these lines. Um, all right, so first thing I can do is this is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. We have five floors here, so I'm going to take this edge and I'm going to divide the edges. That wasn't the thing I meant to do. Divide that into five pieces. That was an extension. I don't even know what extension that was. You know, sometimes when you download a lot of extensions, it's kind of like a surprise to you, SketchUp. Like, oh, here's a thing you didn't know you had. I think I, that looked like a Fredo UI, so I think I got that from Fredo. I'm not sure. You guys, anybody recognize that little thing that came up? Let me click on it again. So I was, I was shooting for regular SketchUp Divide, but I had this Divide Edges in here also. Um, so yeah, so these, these colors make me think it's Fredo, but... Uh, I don't know. It could be he has a couple things that are like toolboxes where you download one thing and you get a whole bunch of other stuff. So it could be. Anyhow, um, so these are my these are where my floors are going to be. Um, you know, I actually jumped the gun there when I deleted those extra lines because really, if I'm going to go do quarters, I'm going to build this as optimally as possible. I'm really only going to model, well, not even this much. I'm really only, I'm going to create a component that is actually uh, this much. This component then will repeat vertically and mirrored this way, mirrored this way. So this is actually the piece that I want to uh, put together. So... What I need now is some kind of reference that tells me a little bit more about what these floors look like. Um, so I think I'm going to look at this one real quick. Yeah, this is kind of what I was thinking. Okie do. It's a little bigger. So it looks like this is the middle here. Huh. Here's the middle. We got some uh, kind of like pillar shapes and then windows inside of them. So I'm trying to figure out how many to do here. Um, Oh, right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ugh, I need to throw my count all off with this fancy, this fancy detail here. Like, like they had no consideration for the fact that I would be looking at this 
decades after it was built on a screen trying to model it in less than two hours. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It's about 21 divisions. Hmm, so how should we do this? Okay, so divide extensions is part of the Fredo toolbox. So Fredo tools. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. Cause I did, I think I put that, I, I was actually looking for another thing and then I saw that and I'm like, oh, Fredo tools, I probably need that. And I think I downloaded it, installed it and uh, obviously forgot about it. So anyhow, uh, less stalling, more talking. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at a high level of detail I'm going to, I'm going to break this line right here. I'm going to divide that into uh, 10 pieces. And then I'm just curious, I want to see how that increment interacts over here on this side. Not well, not well. So hoping I can come up with a single component that I could just slap in there and then use all the way around. But this is obviously going to be something a little bit different. Okay. So I got this, and it kind of looks what ha like what happens is in each of these, I have like a column, a column, a small column between, and then two win a window in between each of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to with these kind of bigger numbers, bigger shapes. So I'm going to come over this way, uh, three foot. Oops. I'm going to come back in one foot. And then over here. Oh, same thing. Three foot. And go back in 12 inches. All right, and at the middle, come out here and I'm gonna come over sort of two foot shape right here. I'm gonna come back this way, 24. All right, and this now is going to be my front elevation Thing. You know, I'm a stickler for exact names and all, so I'm pretty sure when they built the Empire State Building, front elevation thing was a term they used as well. All right, and then all right, I'm going to come here, I'm going to come down 24 inches, I'll come up 36 inches. way and then I will push that in another six inches all right so that now I'm gonna call that my front elevation window all right now I'm gonna grab that I'm going to offset it once X nine total, and that should give me, there's the front of the building. I'm just gonna pull that mass on the inside back. I want the front of this, this I want my, ele my elevator, my, uh, my actual dimension to come to the front right there. I don't want it going off on the side. All right, now I want a similar elevation or a similar uh, block component for the side, right? But it can't be exactly the same because if I take this, this is what I was looking at before, if I just offset that across there five times, whatever, it ends up not quite in the middle of this one. 
So, and again, I don't have a solid image of the opposite side. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some things up. Um, cause, that's why I'm making things up, is because. Um, let's see, let's see, how, how could we possibly remedy this? If I was to grab all of the, well here, let's push this back first. If I was to grab all of these and was to give a larger, that's pretty close, look at that. So I might do that. I'm gonna take all of these and I'm gonna offset them to the center. And then I'm gonna make this one unique. And I'm gonna call it corner. And I'm gonna go into that unique corner and I'm gonna use push pull Pull that out to there. I'm going to go to this one now, make this unique as well. And I'm going to call this one half. And in the half, I'm going to literally just do just that. Cut it in half. And then I'm going to erase, shift erase to get rid of the seam line. So when we see it on the other half, it, it all looks uh, good. All right, so that is a quarter of my building. I'm just going to delete this mass on the inside. I'm going to grab all of these. I'm going to make that a new component. And I'm gonna call this no, floor 001, yeah, hmm, quarter. We'll be specific. All right, and now I'm gonna take it, option, copy it up once, and I need that, I need one, two, three, four copies, so I'm gonna type X4. All right, I'm gonna get rid of my extra lines right here. And now one more thing, I'm gonna come in here with a rectangle and put a rectangle right there. And all of that now make into another component that is First floors, that's it. Maybe. No, I'll call it floors <laughs> one through five. Oh, you know what? I can almost guarantee you guys right now, by the time I'm done, my naming convention is not going to be the same. I can feel it. I can already feel it bubbling up. It's, it's gonna happen. All right, I didn't call that quarter. See, told you. All right, so I'm gonna take that right now and I'm going to make a copy. I'm just gonna copy it over here, right click, flip along the green axes, and then I can grab it and slide it right back here. All right, and I'll grab both of these Option, copy it over here, flip along the red direction, and move that back in line right here. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna save. You guys probably knew that though, because I'm really good at that. All right, so that is the first floor. Um, we got a lot of extra lines on here though <clears throat> that I don't like. So I'm gonna come in here, double click, double click, double click, double click, and I'm gonna start getting rid of some geometry. Um, some of it I can just hide, most of it I can just hide. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key, shift will hide lines, and I'm gonna start just getting rid of some of these lines. This one, this one, my vertical lines.
I gotta think of the best way to do all right so I'll start with that see how that looks all right that looks better um, I definitely get rid of these two lines too that'll help it's getting better but there's a couple spots Uh, I saved. Um, so there's a couple spots that are going to be more of issues than others. Um, so right here, so if I come in here, I'm going to burrow all the way down to this component. If I come in here and shift erase these top lines, right, like that. That looks great down here. Oop, I can go and I can get one more. That looks great across here, but it ends up potentially losing a little detail like right here. See this? I, I lose my, my top line right there. So not, not a bad thing necessarily. Um, but I gotta make the call on what exactly I wanna do there as far as cleaning up. Because one thing that I could do is I could come in here, I could actually take this, I could take this line out to here, and then take this line out to here. I could select this, intersect faces with the model. No, it didn't work. move this vertically there we go and now intersect faces the model and now I could actually delete these not too bad I mean that's a little little repetitive cleanup but that's uh, probably the cleanest way to get that model I want to just not just repeat geometry I know I could do this build this all once but I do want to keep it the general idea that I'm going for is I have started with a super high level of detail, just a bunch of boxes, and then I adding detail now, and I wanna keep it easy to keep going in and adding more detail. So by com making each of these window sections its own component, it's gonna make it way easier for me. So now if I take that and I move it back up, there we go, I get my lines back. And it actually broke it. See that it broke it where it hit the other components? I can clean that up too. I can actually come in here. I'll use the, the cleanup extension to merge faces. And that should get rid of my extra lines. I can do that again. Triple click, extension, cleanup, and erase straight edges. There we go. I have one solid piece there. All right, so that looks better. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I could, let's see. I could probably come in a little bit further even. If I could get rid of this line back here. That looks pretty good. All right, now I'll come over here, do the same thing over on this side. I didn't clean up this edge. Remember the side component was a different one. Uh, because th this end piece was its own piece. So I can actually come in here and get rid of some of this geometry and then shift erase to get rid of uh, this geometry. In order to get at the top and uh, this is the nice thing about over here too. And the last one is this guy right here on the corner. 
Oops. Double click to get in first. Actually don't need this geometry on the outside at all. Now, my hope is to be able to reuse these components again as I work my way up the building. Possibly uh, doing a little bit of scaling if necessary. Uh, scale the component shell to make it different sizes, but uh, nope, wrong button. All right, there we go. All right, so that is my my first floor. As I work my way up, well, let's let's go. Uh, let's save. I know you guys already thought of it. Um, that looks pretty good. Uh, as we come up here, now this doesn't really do me a whole lot of good anymore. I'm going to delete it. I don't need it right now. Um, uh, on the top floor does not have blocking between windows. Quite, completely flat as well as the first floor. Hold on. I'm I'm on a mission to get rid of this little dot right here. There we go. Um, are you talking about the... Uh, oh, let's go back to our, our image. Yeah, so right here and here, it is a little bit different, I agree. Um, and that's where, like I said, I'm going to start with the initially, I'm going to grab this geometry and reproduce it to get my, my massing, but I have it broken apart in such a way that I could actually just keep working way up the building and modify components. So right here, so this, what this lets me do right now is I could come into this group right here and I could actually take just this top level and make it unique. Then I could come in and just change the profiles. I could just grab these ones, make them unique and change the profiles of just them. So it's kind of a, a good way to do it. We'll, we'll do that. We'll, we'll get this up here. We'll get our these window profiles in the whole building, and we'll come back and look at where we could change them. Uh, at least that's my idea. All right, I'm going to grab these, not make them a component, but I'm just going to make them a group uh, just so they're all one piece. All right, next group. I'm going to unlock and enter the next floor. Uh, we'll hide everything else. All right, this floor is, let's see. Ooh, I have a lot, lot of pictures open right now. I think this is the one that, all right, so this is the 6th to 20th floor, so 15 floors. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yep, checks out. 15 floors. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to grab this line. I'm going to divide it. And uh, I can actually just type in 15, enter. All right, so that's one floor right there. Um, so I want to do everything I'm about to do. All right, so this is what I have to recreate and then copy 15 times. 15 times, then three more times. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by going into my components browser and I'm gonna grab my front elevation window and just bring it in. I'm gonna take it now, grab it by the corner and put it right there. All right, so I can tell right off the bat, there's a little bit of an issue. Um, so at this point, I have a couple options. I could make a new front elevation window that is, I could come into it and uh, you know, create a new version of it where I grab this here and I move it up. Obviously, if I do that now, I'm gonna mess with my whole building. 
So I don't want to do that. Um, if I wanted to do that, I would take this, right click, make it unique. What I'm going to do instead for this particular one is I'm just going to take the shell, the outside, and I'm going to squish it. So I'm just going to make it smaller so it fits right there. I'm going to grab that then, option copy over to here. Oh, I don't have any endpoints to snap to. I'm just going to use the, use the edge or something or anything. I have nothing. All right, so I'm going to have to show my hidden geometry. Now, if I turn hidden geometry, now I can option copy over here. All right, so same thing happens here. This ends up being kind of cut off or something like that. So again, <laughs> I have the option to figure out what I want to do. Well, let's, I don't really, ha the problem is I don't really have a, okay, these, these do look thinner than what we have down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both of these and I'm going to scale them. Oops. To here. I'm going to take this one then. here, flip it around, flat like that, scale it back to here, I'll take that one, X three-ish, that'll work, take those three, scale them, back to here. I already know this one fits, so I'm just going to grab it, copy, use, rotate, flip it around, drop it right there, and I'll grab both of these, option to copy over to here, and it looks like I need a half of one to sit here. Fortunately, I happen to have a half right here. So I'm going to take that one, flip it along the red, and then place that right there, and whoops, and scale the bottom up. I need to put some stuff over here too, probably. All right, I'm gonna grab this component, option copy, stick it right here. Again, option copy, X3, pretty close. All right, I'm gonna take those and scale that back just a touch. All right. So with that, now I can actually delete that geometry. There's that piece. So I can, just like I did before, I'm going to grab everything down here. And I'm going to make that into a component. What was this, the sixth? And then I will take that, turn my hidden back on so I have some endpoints to deal with. Option, copy that up once, X14. X13. I think I got that an extra time. There we go. All right. So there's that quarter. Oh no, I was right. One more time. There we go. My lines, my, my lines that I drew as a reference, I must have gotten rid of some of. That goes all the way up to there. And now I can take this. Actually, here's what I'll do first. First thing I will do is create a big rectangle. And 
I'm going to take that rectangle, I'm going to move it down vertically, until it crosses in, because i gotta, I got to do that same intersection I did before. Um, way. All right, and then select that surface. Intersect face with model. And because I pulled it out long like this, it's going to be a lot easier to clean up because I can just, oh, easy for me to say, something didn't intersect the way it was supposed to. Yeah, looks good, looks good. Oh, these lines. All right, let's try that again. Pull that through. Yeah, see something's not closing up. I didn't get that uh, light colored line. I didn't get an obvious geometry's broken line like that. There we go. Oh, I did. Sometimes you got to coax it a little bit. But what I was saying is by doing that, I can just take this now here up here and I won't have a, as many, I won't have to go through and delete each over each window like I did before. I am still with it all selected like this. I'm still going to go to weld or I'm sorry to clean up and say merge faces, merge faces and erase straight edges. That's just going to get rid of those extra lines in there that I saw before. All right, that looks good. I can take that whole thing. Ooh, look at this pretty shape I made. <laughs> I don't know how I did that, but uh, that's nice. What exactly happened there, you think? Huh. I don't know, but it doesn't want to uh, do what it's supposed to do. Let's take that back. That was interesting. It's architectural feature, undocumented architectural feature we had right there. All right. Take this piece right here, option copy it off the side, right click, flip along. Okay, so here, here's the thing, flip along. I was talking to somebody today, this morning, about how I still <laughs> struggle with flip along. And I think I figured out my problems. I think my problem is that term uh, flip along. I think what my brain wants to do is pick the axes of reflection. Um, flip along, so when I go to right here, flip along, so you're, you're, you're telling it flip it this way, so take it and flip it that direction. So I'm gonna say flip along the red axes because it runs this, this direction. You guys probably already figured this out because you're so much smarter than me, so. Um, but my brain wants to pick the green axes to do that because I want to pick the line that I want to mirror it across. Like I, so I want to pick this, which actually isn't a line. It would be the red, green surface. I want it to mirror along that. So I'm just saying, I'm still, I'm still struggling, you guys, but I'm trying to do it because, you know, growth or maturity or whatever. But I'm a... Uh, I'm doing my best. I'm getting there. All right, so there we go. That is not looking bad. That's that's kind of cool. I kind of like that. Oop, I'm gonna come in here and shift erase these two lines. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I want to blame you guys, but this is on me. <laughs> I did not make this. <laughs> I didn't. I made it a group and not a component. So 
floors 6 through 2020. Because I, I didn't, yeah, so I started, I started ranting about flip along there. All right, let's try this again. Right click, like it's no big deal, flip along the green axes. All right, but I will tell you this, as we discuss flip along, I have been using Curic Mirror, and I know there's, I don't, you guys don't have to tell me, I know there's other mirror tools out there. I know TIG has one that's been around forever. I, that's awesome. I just happened to download Curic Mirror, and if I click Curic Mirror and I come over here and just hover over this face right here, give me a face. Oh, I don't have a face to mirror along. Terrible story. <laughs> Didn't have an end at all. <laughs> all right. Uh, so actually, here's what I was doing. On another model I was working on, um, I started making these flags. I started doing this a lot, where I draw a line out, draw it up, draw it back like that, and then I could grab Curic, hover over this surface, option click, and have it mirror, and then this flag sticking out here far enough, I can just delete it real quick and easy. Um, but yeah, that's something, that, that workflow is, is a lot I've been doing. Um, awesome. Cool. So now I can double click in here and now I can shift erase these lines and they'll go away and it'll look like one big solid pretty piece. Oh, wrong, wrong button. There we go. Okay. All right, working our way up. That's not bad for uh, the amount of time we got into this. And it's pretty snappy right now. It's still pretty, it's still pretty quick. It's not getting weighed down or anything. Uh, so yeah, let's see uh, how quick I can do this next block. I'm gonna unlock that. Let's see how uh, how big is that group. That is that. That's the one that doesn't. This is the image that doesn't help me. I'm gonna just close it. All right. Next one is let's see, 20 to 24. So this is four floors. So I'm going to come in here, again, boil this all down to just what I need. I just need, actually, hold up. So this is four floors, did I do that right, math right? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five floors. Yeah, five floors. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna divide that into five segments. So this is how high a floor is on here. And now, now I can get rid of that and I can go grab my window. I turn my hidden back on again to do this stuff. There we go. Copy it, option X3. All right, so here's one thing I'm, I'm kind of wondering about, because I think what I would be inclined to do is put three of those blocks in, then grab my half block. Flip that. And this is what I feel like I want to do. I want to bring that back to here, but here's my thing. If I turn on my hidden stuff, I do have something I'm trying to align with, and that was not it. This was actually it. So I'm gonna wanna be conscious as I go through these next couple floors, making sure that my lines line up one level to the next. So this one right here was a single like that and then like that. Does that line up? Nope, it doesn't. Well, you know what? Here's the a wiser man 
would double click in here, grab this, 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 and this, hit control C, come into this group, and paste that right into where it goes. As I talk about the time-saving use of components and then attempt to not even use them. All right, over here is gonna be a little easier. I'll do the same thing though. I will start Control C. Control V and drop that thing. Right there. And scale it up. All right. Now I can take this option, click here, times two. That gets me pretty close. Um, yeah, and take just these two. No, hmm, what to do here? Let me look at what goes on next. So next, we got this thing up here. I'm gonna grab that by the corner. Option click, bring that over here first. All right, so what I got going here, so I can get rid of this piece and this piece, bring my half, half a piece in. Live it this way, and then I will grab both of these and scale that out just ever so slightly. And actually, this piece, because I just brought it in, is probably hanging down. Yeah, push that back up. All right, there we go. So, the only thing I really have to do here is fill this section in right here. Um, so, I can actually just grab these two and scale them over just slightly to fill that there. And then I'm going to just stick a rectangle right there to fill that shape in. All right, with that, I can grab that geometry on the outside, get rid of it. All right, so now I have this, which I want to make into a component. Floor, where are we on? 21, 25, 20, oh. 25. All right, and then I'll take that. Option copied up once, X4. We're to the next level. And then uh, here's what I'm gonna do here. I'm going to draw that big rectangle I was talking about. I'll go past on all the sides. I got to turn off hidden. Whew. It's amazing how heavy your model will get having hidden. I mean, I guess it makes a lot of sense. It's actually incredibly logical, but <laughs> having those extra hidden lines on can really slow stuff down. All right. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to bring it down. There we go. Intersect face with model. And then uh, I'm going to grab that corner right there, drag it all the way through. Same thing here. Come over here, click right there, drag that all the way through, and then I'm going to start deleting. Oh. No, no, I can't. All right, I got to make this into a group because I got to hide some stuff to see what I'm doing. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, dang it. Grab all those, right click. Oops. Did my floors go too far down? Oop, right here. All right, 
triple click here, single click, single click, single click, single click, single click, right click, and make component floors 25 through 29 quarter. I'm doing pretty good. I'm pretty sure I'm sticking to my naming convention, but I don't feel confident enough to actually go look. So ignorance is bliss. All right, I'm gonna double click in here. Everything else goes away. Now I can figure out why that didn't break. I'm guessing there's a line missing somewhere. Yeah, if I look around here, looks good. This trace around looks good. But something's not breaking. some of these lines a little smaller all right let's see go all right so it's something I've narrowed it down I'm narrowing it down basically I'm chasing the oh 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 it was that little spot that I didn't ha huh. okay that was on me I drew a little rectangle to fill it in and something 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 went not right <laughs> I'm gonna take that push it back up I'm gonna turn my hidden on so I can snap to it what was the problem? Oh, where did I leave that rectangle? Did I undo or something? All right, let me try that again. Uh, reverse faces, and then hide those edges. All right, there we go. Yeah, that's looking all right. Okay, so I take that piece, option copy, just throw it over. I just and this again, this is this is probably my workflow. It's probably not even ideal, but option. I just kind of throw it off to the side, and then I can do something like flip along the green axes and bring it on back. And then I can take both of these. And this is symmetrical front to back, so I could actually use rotate here. Um, but the reason I'm not gonna use rotate is I don't know exactly how this is gonna, what's gonna end up happening with this design in the end. If, uh, say I was to want to come in and do something like a, uh, a different detail on the front of the building than was on the side or, or the, the back or something like that, uh, if this was flipped, so it's the other way around, um, I would lose the ability to uh, to do that. I'd have to go in and uh, explode that group and, and redo it. But you know, say what I don't know, whatever. The windows in the front are a different color, something like that. Because it was rotated. If I rotated it, it would give me the geometry right now, but it would it would be the same geometry uh, later. So generally speaking, we want to copy that over instead. All right, not looking too bad. Still pretty good. Good. Uh, Good, good groups, good golly. All right, so now we are at a spot where I should save. And we are not quite to the biggest one yet, but here we are 25, wait, wait a minute. What's going on here? Did I just do something weird? Odds are good. All right, so here was the 21st through 24th and then 25th through 29th. Somebody probably should have said something about that. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. And I'm right here, where I go from floor 21, 22, 23, 24. So I actually should have only been four. Not a big deal. That's a uh, that's that's a thing we can easily pretty easily fix. So this should have this needs to be one floor shorter, but fill the same amount of space. So I'm gonna draw a line like this, and then I'm gonna delete this right here. I'm gonna draw a line straight up to here. I'm going to divide this by not five, but 
four floors. And I'm going to grab these three and I'm going to scoot them down vertically to here. Now I'm going to grab oops, just these two floors, drop them vertically to here, and grab this, this last floor, drop it vertically to here. And now I'm going to come in here to this one. Nope, I'm going to grab everything. And I'm going to scale it vertically. Actually, I can come on. I can actually do it on this level. Nope. All right. I'm going to grab this whole thing and just scale it vertically down here. Same thing. Scale this one down here. Grab this one. So this right here is components. So what I'm doing right now is I'm not actually deforming the components. I'm stretching the container that the components reside inside of. Makes sense, right? Yeah, I meant to make that mistake so I could show how easy it would be to change. <laughs> Anybody buy that? All right, so that looks pretty good. This section is five stories. I'm going to go check that again right now. Let's see. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, five stories. Okay. Whew. All right. <laughs> I'm going to unlock. I'll open this up and grab this line again, just like I did before. Divide. I'm just going to type in five. Enter. Let's see, where's that? That's right here. Yep, that's right here. I'm going to push pull this down to this one. The rest of these I'm just going to push pull down all the way. Get rid of them. Don't need them. Don't need this anymore. Don't need this anymore. All right, and now I'm going to go to uh, this floor right here and I'm going to grab these. And these, copy, and paste them because they line up with those levels below right here. Now I can just grab this chunk, line it up. Ooh, these are actually. Uh, Floors are a little bit bigger than the floors below. Don't tell the guys downstairs that we got an extra, good extra three inches of roof of uh, head, head space up here. I'm gonna drag that up and I'm just gonna grab all of them. And just like I did before, use scale to stretch that down to the floor. All right. All right, now I'm gonna take that X2, and grab this one's a half of one, so I'm going to grab that, and I'm going to drop that right here. And I'm just going to scale back. No, I am, I'm, uh, redo, redo. I want to see what happens with that. All right, right here, same thing. Option copied over. Oh, I turned my hidden on. Got to remember that. That's, that's not a, it's an easy one. All right, take this one. Just moving, moving components around. That's all I'm doing. Um, so for these corners, all I'm going to do, 
get rid of this geometry. And I'm just going to throw a couple pieces of geometry in here to close up like that. And I'm just going to select those edges, not the faces, just the edges. The surfaces stay, and I'm just going to turn them off so I can't see them. And then I'll do the same thing over here. Right, grab those edges. The reason I'm grabbing them and choosing the toggle off visibility instead of swiping with the shift eraser key is shift eraser, if I come across here and do that, is going to catch the edge of this component and make it disappear too. So selection allows me to actually go pick those pieces Oop, this piece should be hidden too. Uh, but I can select it and then just toggle it over here makes it a little better, a little cleaner. All right, there we go. That is a quarter of my building. So I'm going to take that. Turn off my hidden. There we go. I'm going to take that, and I'm going to copy it up, not one, but four times. And that should line up. Yep, lines up with the floor above. Looking good. I'm going to put a roof in again. Really tired of drawing roofs, you guys. It's so, so boring. All right, uh, I'm gonna turn on hidden geometry, give myself a start point. And click there. You see, I'm just kind of going long and snapping to the axes. I'm just kind of drawing a big square to go and intersect with geometry. I don't really care about where it falls or anything like that. All right, there we go. Now I can take this whole surface I'm going to zoom in from underneath, kind of just slide right in here. And I'm going to move it down, right click, intersect face with model. All right, let's see, let's see if it comes out clean this time. One side, when I draw this one across, it should break the surface. Let's see. Oh, love it when things work out. All right, so let's get this back to where it needs to actually go. Run through this way. And then zoom in here. This guy right here is going to run through this way. And now I can start erasing some extra stuff. That looks, that's nice. All right. Um, I'm going to grab my two, three, four. For a second there, I thought I only had four floors and I screwed it up again. All right, so I'm going to grab my roof. Actually, I'm going to slide that upwards, back where it's supposed to be. And I'm going to run clean up. You lay, you lay stray edges because I had some there. I'm going to grab that, that roof, two, three, four, five floors, make a component. And this is floor... 25 through 29 quarter. Okay. All right. And this is probably getting repetitive, huh? I'm going to flip along <laughs> the green axes. And I'm going to slap it back on here. And I'm going to grab both of those. Slide it over here, flip along, so I assume is the red direction. There we go. And that's the key to flip along, I think, because it actually says in the name. It says flip along a direction. And I think that's why I'm, I'm a confused person, is because I keep saying axes and I'm thinking axes, and it's not. It's, it's flip in a direction. All right. This is coming, this is really coming together. All right, this is a big one, because we're going to get a lot done with one level here. Um, this is going to be easy. All right, so this one, we're going to explode, or unlock, come in here, and this is a 
the 29th to the 71st. So that's <laughs> 42? Is that 42? I'm totally not checking that on a calculator. Don't even worry about it. I'm, I'm totally confident in my 42 floors. Yeah, like I said, no big deal. All right, I'm going to take that line, that line, and I'm going to divide into 42 segments. All right, so that is my... 40 second segment. I'm going to take this, push it all the way down to that point. Everything else, just like I did before, gets pushed, pulled down to nothing. Get rid of all this. All this goes away. All right, in fact, now, so does this. There's the floor I got to make. I know, it's weird how often math comes up. I think I tempt it by complaining about it. Um, let me grab, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> grab that there, I'm gonna copy that, and go in here, paste it by this corner to the top. And then if I need to do any kind of uh, you ever get this where you're trying to move something and the thing you're moving gets in the way of the point you're trying to snap to. Um, I've been getting this more and more lately because of the kind of model I've been working on. And I'm finding like four out of five times I run into this problem if I flip so I'm looking at it from below or the opposite side, then I can snap it right into place. Kind of a weird thing. I don't know, I don't know why I'm, well, it's like I said, because specifically what I'm modeling is, is more component moving around geometry. But uh, yeah, that snap point, sometimes you gotta just flip your model so you're looking at it from the opposite quadrant, I think. All right, with that, I'm gonna take all those. Snow. Oh, look what's happening. Okay, I had this, uh, this raw geometry merged in with my reference geometry. So when I tried to uh, move it, it was deforming the reference geometry. So I just want to take the components, scale just the components up to there. And then I can actually clip that little piece of geometry off. All right. I'll take these two, and then I'll just move them straight back like that. over here, grab this guy, copy it. I have to use another half one. Where's my... Turn hidden geometry. As you can tell, it's a Friday when something like a step you've done six times so far, turning the hidden geometry so you can move something, becomes so difficult all of a sudden. All right, I'm gonna scale that guy up and then scale him out just ever so slightly. All right, and I'll take one of these, flip it. Throw that right here. And actually just pull that one out. Rather than using filler geometry, I'm just gonna stretch that one out a touch. All right, and I think and this one has to come back just a little bit. All right. That looks like that floor pretty much done.
cool. All right, there's a, another quarter finished. So we'll make that a component. <laughs> I totally agree. Math is straight up painful. Floor 29 quarter. All right, and now I'm going to copy it. Whoops, hold up. Get the, whoa, oh, hey, whoa, ho. What's going on here? Did I bump it? Something's not right. All right. I don't know what I did there, but uh, something's not, something wasn't what it was supposed to be. Looks like we're lined up again now. Section with this right here. Get this guy. Bring it out. This guy right here. Bring it out. All right, there we go. Now we're good. We're back to quarterly happy. Sounds like a pleasant magazine of some sort. Quarterly happy. Or happy quarterly. All right, I'm gonna copy this over here. Once again, flip along, green. Well, that's weird, why is my container so big? Oh, the axe is all the way over there. That's weird. All right, let's slide this in. Rock where it's supposed to be. Grab both of these. Copy again. Off to the side. I gotta turn off hidden geometry because it's slowing down. Alright. Flip along red. Alright, you guys probably already caught on this. I totally decided to do this uh, this model so I could show how good I am at flip along now. Oh, so good. Such good flipping. Okay. Now I can take all of this and copy it. Option up one, X 41 times, yes. It's 41 plus one is 42. <laughs> oh, look at that. It's so skyscraper-y. Woo! Dang, that is, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm at that point in the live stream where I'm like, that turned out better than I was expecting. <laughs> all right, so let's grab all of that. Oops. Yeah, I did that wrong, didn't I? Got to make my my full full side before I start copying. I got cocky. I, I, I got excited. And uh, ooh, that's oddly satisfying. All right, focus. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right, there we go. Nope. Now we, now there we go. I gotta put a roof on before I copy the quarters. Come on, man. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna save myself a step. I'm gonna start drawing my corner, or my, my big plane. I'm gonna save myself a couple steps. I'm gonna go to rectangle, and I'm gonna draw it from the middle, flat, from this piece right here. And I'm just gonna pull it out nice and big like that. Right click, intersect face with the model. And then I'm going to click right here and pull that all the way across on the red axes. Come right here, pull that all the way across on the green axes. Something didn't break. Where did I copy geometry? I put geometry in right here. That looks okay. That looks okay. Ooh, something happened in here. Oh. All right, so somewhere. Oh, oh, it. Oh, nope. Got excited for a second there. 
All right, so we gotta hunt down the break. So here's my general plan for that. Draw a line out here on the green axis to break it this way. So that broke okay. Well, whatever I just did caused everything to break. So, uh, yeah. Sometimes you just gotta nudge it along there, you know? Come on, come on, break. That's what all the cool kids are doing. All right, there we go. So there's that geometry. I'm gonna grab that. And again, like I have so many times now, scoot it straight up, run clean up on it, and get rid of my straight edges, and then grab that. And all these floors below, 42 floors. Make that into a com component called floors 29 through 71 quarter. And now that is a piece I want to copy over here. Flip along the green axes. Slide back over. I have to turn on hidden geometry again. Hidden geometry in and of itself is not a bad thing, of course. It's a good thing. It allows me to have geometry on hidden, ge or like snappable geometry on hidden geometry, but uh, yeah, sometimes it does slow things down because it's a lot of extra lines to draw. Um, actually, what I should be doing, I'll get back to that. Flip along, uh, red. All right, and now we'll bring that right in here. I am getting a teeny bit of a lag right now. So one, one more thing that I'm gonna do is uh, come over here to my styles and turn off my profiles. That makes such a big difference. If you guys are ever hitting any lag, get rid of those profiles. I, I, I mean, I like profiles. I like that, that distinctly sketch up look of the heavier lines around the outside for sure. But man, if you have a big model to model, uh, it's so much quicker when it doesn't have to calculate where those edges are. Where is the outside edge? Is basically what it's doing every time you do that. Much, much quicker. All right, shift, erase. Man, we're almost to the top. Uh, we got two more blocks to do. Oh, this is one floor, that'll be easy. Um, yeah, copy and flip along are just uh, my guys. Math is energy consuming. Oh, totally agree. <laughs> um, I had a question just to, to back up a few. I was in grunt work mode. I was getting her done. I was just, just going head down, you know. Um, but I get this question quite a bit. And uh, just to show you guys my Mac, this is what I'm using right now. 2.9 gigahertz Intel Core i7, 16 gigabytes of memory. Um, and uh, a Radon Pro 560 with four gigs. Um, so it's not a super high level or anything like that uh, piece of hardware by any means. It's, it's, I think, just a step above the stock uh, MacBook Pro. The big thing that I've found to make a big difference is memory. So uh, I think since I've started here, I've always had that 16 gig as opposed to, I think eight is the, the standard that they offer. Um, all right, Jimmy, oh, hold up, Daryl, Daryl's my Darrell, Daryl, Daryl, oh, <laughs> Daryl Hampton is reminding me to save, thank you, Daryl, and Jimmy Pacris is saying the next section is not rectangular, but H-shaped, half step in of the H floor below. Okay. I believe you, um, but what does that mean? Um, do you have an image you could throw up on our forum? That would be great, Jimmy, because I'm not quite sure what you mean by half step. I did see, so it did look like it stepped in this way and this way. What I didn't see is if it, does it step in here? Does like this go in also? Is that what you mean by half step? Um, 
let me let me return to the reference photo. So this one's great vertical dimensions, but it doesn't tell me much about the profile of the building. Um, same thing here. So we're talking about this section right here. I can't really tell. I guess that's this. Hmm. Uh, nope, these are all. Yeah, so if you got a little uh, example of what that is, uh, we'll we'll run with it. But uh, here, let's we try this. We try last ditch effort, actual photo reference. Okay, there you go. See, it does actually step in <laughs> based on this this drawing from what appears to be a hand-printed poster. Um, yeah. There's a con in construction drawing, so it does keep that up for... Looks like it, the H does continue up to this one. It actually almost, yeah. It does look like it steps in. So what I did here was this, this step was correct. So what we have to do is maybe we'll just do something like, um, Something like this. And then push this back. Ooh, whoop. Something was wrong on that last, I came out of plane or something on that last level. That, something got pushed around. I don't really understand what or how. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, to copy this to the other side, I'm going to come up here. Use that to copy it over so I don't have to draw this twice. And it looks like what happens is this pushes in to this face because it looks like uh, this this set of windows actually carries up through here. So I'm going to assume something like that. We'll see how that goes. We'll give it give it a shot. Um, Ian just threw up a, a picture like from a helicopter or something. That's basically what it looks like. So. We're going to pretend that that is perfect. Pretend with me now. All right, so what we'll do is we'll carry this up to here. Um, pull the outside floors out. Oh, you're saying this, this step is less? So something more like that. Yeah, sure, I'd buy that. Good, Jimmy, do, do I get a... Does that look good? I know, after, after I picked this, I started thinking about what would be a fun thing to model if I had extra time, and King Kong was the first thing that came to mind. I'm not gonna do that, though. I'm just, uh, yeah, that's probably not gonna happen. All right, anyhow, we got get back on track. Focus, because that's what we're known for. Um, talking right here, uh, this is the 72nd to the 84th.
right? Something doesn't right there. No, it's the 80th. Um, oh, 72nd to the 80th. Okay. They have this at symbol in here, and I'm very confused. Um, so 72 through the 80th. So nine floors. So I'm two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nine floors. I just confirmed it with my mathers. All right. So nine floors. I'm going to come in here. Take this guy right here, divide by nine. And there's the height we want to go to. All right. Throw these guys down. Okay, so that's what I gotta I gotta make. I'm gonna, let's see here. I don't really like to, I can do whatever I want on this one. I really don't have anything to follow. Um, but I will probably come in and grab a bunch of this geometry, just to save myself some time. Um, I can copy that. Come in here. that right there. So I'll delete this one and grab my half. Throw my, my half window in here. Flip it. Stick that right there. Actually, before I mess with this anymore, I gotta get these the right height because it looks like they're very, very, very close, but not exactly the same height. Look in here, they're just slightly off. Probably due to the lack of Trimble technology available at the time that the Empire State Building was built. All right, slide that in. Grab this guy right here. I'm gonna make some narrow windows here. Go back like that. I'm architecting. That all looks good. Down here. Get rid of that one. Pull that out a little bit further. All right. Delete that. Close that up. Hide those extra lines again. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Um, oh, give me a little more, a little more filling in right here. Hide that. All right, we got, we got that. Uh, oops, <laughs> I drew a little line in there to use to flip that around. Forgot about that. All right, we take that right there. Option copy, X8, which will give us a total of nine floors. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing I did last time. I'm gonna draw a rectangle from the middle right about here, nice and big. Reverse it, intersect face with the model. Drag a line across there. 
there, drag a line across there. Try and just force it to the spots that I drew in my my extra gap filler, see if that causes an issue. Nope. Alright, so I'm just gonna try. I can snap it to make it break, try to force it to break somewhere. Something's still not, oh no, there we go, I did it. Awesome. Cool. And take that, again, slide it up, and use clean up to erase the straight edges. And now I'm gonna grab all of uh, that. Make that a new component. Floors. <laughs> 72 through 80. All right, awesome. Option copy, we're almost there guys. I'm going to flip along, look way down there to the distance to see where the axes are. Green, slap that right there. Grab both these, option copy over here. Just right click, flip along the red. And then I can grab it and slide it into place right where it's supposed to go. Uh, quick uh, shift erase, get rid of my extra lines. Another block of floors is done. All right, one more. This top section has, has some floors to it. Uh, five floors to be exact. going to almost there almost there almost there divide that by five oh and I didn't divide this I'm gonna I'm gonna do it I'm gonna I'm just gonna do a quarter again it's been working for me so far I'm just gonna stick with what works The only reason is because I want to make sure that these windows line up one side to the other. Um, this one right here is on its own, so so I'll come in here, copy those two, come in here, paste this. I'm far enough in this that I'm just going to do that. You get a little extra space there if you live on that, that section of the building. Oop, I didn't. Scale that to the right height. All right. Almost there. Four copies. I'm so gonna cut a corner right now. Hmm. That's the first thing I gotta do. Just gonna manually close up this section right here. 
and then just draw a rectangle from here to here. Hide the edges. Component. <laughs> oh man, it never ceases to amaze me how quickly I can forget information. <laughs> you ever do that thing where you like you go look at something and you're like, okay, I've seen it now, and then it occurs to you as you leave that even though you saw it, you didn't absorb the information that you actually required from it. Flipped over to see what floors it was that I copied, saw the numbers, came back without actually, you know, retaining or even making any kind of mental note of what those numbers were. All right. All right. Sick looking building. That is really cool. That, that turned out pretty cool. All right. <coughs> To the spire. No, to the mooring dock. This is AA Ron math right here. This is when I use my calculators. All right. Um, how best to do this? So I do have a reference image. I'm gonna let's, let's start by pulling that in. Um, All right, so ooh, and this picture has teeny tiny numbers. <laughs> what does that say? Fifteen foot. Oh, um. All right, I'm gonna pick a number. I'm gonna say this is 21 foot seven right here. And I'm gonna scale the model to that and uh, just pull dimensions off of the geometry after that. So all right, make that a group. And then I will dimension, click, click. Tell it that it is 21 foot seven. Rescale the group, all right. That's it, guys. That is, that's the scale we're working off of. <laughs> I'm going to start by just creating a 2D profile of the whole thing. So I'm going to come to here. No, that's actually the observation deck starts right there. All right, so I'm going to come here. that trying to decide how much detail to throw in here I'm going to start with too much we can always scale back it's Friday, biting off more than you can chew seems appropriate. Good way to end the... Uh... Good way to end the day. This, this little relief, or this, uh, this profile seems to repeat itself. It probably could have done well to Copy that or something. You guys have been to the Empire State Building, but it is it is a pretty cool experience. It's not as big as some, there are bigger buildings out there, but uh, it's pretty neat. It's pretty cool. 
All right, I'm gonna start. Well, I can keep that as a chunk. I'll just keep it as a separate profile for right now. All right, this part's gonna be a little different. I actually wanna get this spire, because I think that what this does is these, these wings actually kind of go in like this. So this rectangle here is further inset than these pieces kind of come out from the corners. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the middle piece right there. And go. That's what that inside square is gonna look like. Cause that's the middle of this angled piece coming over. So those, those pieces that come out should go into where that square is. I think that's gonna work. I got, I got a thing I'm trying here, but uh, we'll have to see. All right, the rest of this then, this section up here is actually octagonal, I believe. All right, so I'm having a hard time seeing the line on top of here. There's a couple things you could do. One thing, if you're drawing over a reference image and lose the lines on the black lines, you can always go into style and change your line color. That's a good way to do it. Something else you can do for just a little bit, like I just have this little section to trace out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn on X-ray. And what X-ray does is see it makes your, your drawing a lot easier to see through. So you can uh, kind of see your lines as you trace. That's nice if you have, uh, this is just a temporary thing like this. Um, it does, if you have a bunch of stuff hanging out behind you, it can definitely add more click, potential misclick spots, more spots you can click to. Um, but in this case, I got nothing behind me. It's wide open, so uh, I can just kind of go for it. All right, cool. All right, so this portion first. I'm gonna take that, copy it. figure out let's do this where this goes and now I'm gonna grab a rectangle so this is 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 in the center right now I'm gonna grab a rectangle from this point right here and drop it down here till it becomes square Just right at that edge. Right. Take this. Grab that and do follow me with that profile. All right, that'll work. Again, I still have to come in and I got a, it wasn't quite square, was it? It's actually too far, undo. Somebody lied to me. <laughs> Let's try that again. All right, so I'm gonna put that in the center. And so I'm trying to rectangular snap. I probably didn't come in here close enough to get my square snap to show up. I think the problem is it's close to that edge, but not quite. Here's what I'll do instead. I'll just take this point right here, option copy to 90 degrees, and then draw a line across. That's a square. Yeah, my, uh, my shortcuts don't only uh, apply
apply to uh, doing math, but figuring out geometry as well. All right, there we go. So now, I'll try that again, select all that, follow me. All right, reverse faces. So I do have to put my, my corner geometry on here still, but that's looking pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna grab, come in here and grab my octagon profile, draw a line across here, bring this in, just wanna bring it by that corner, <laughs> way off in the distance there, and put it right here, because that's centered in the spire. And now, and again, I'm going off of what I pieced together from looking at these images, you guys, but uh, it looks like this isn't octagon, eight-sided shape here. So I'm gonna make this a group temporarily. And here, I believe, let's see. Yeah, we're actually looking, this is a face, not an edge. So I actually wanna hit my modifier key to switch the uh, polygon. So I'm, I'm, I'm drawing by the edge rather than uh, a corner. So I should be able to select just the outside edges. Again, I'm gonna hit follow me. And this is still a group, but I can right click, edit group, pick that. Didn't work, did something wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna double click, get all these. Double click to turn that off, double click to turn that off, turn this off, so I have my path selected. Right click. Hmm, guess it doesn't work anymore. All right, I'm gonna grab. Oh, did I have all of that selected too? That'll do it, all right. Follow me. Right click, edit group, click. That doesn't seem like the profile I wanted to have. All right, I, I've, I'm quickly approaching those that point where uh, I'm spending way more time on this than I need to. So I'm gonna explode this. I'm gonna pick this, follow me, and click that. Um, all right, so that gets me up to here. <laughs> all right, that looks looks pretty good. Um, did I do something wrong? You guys call me back to this last thing. I put the wrong number of floors. One, two, three, four, five. In my eighty-one through eighty-four. Yep, yep, sure did. And you guys just know that I can't ignore that, right? <laughs> I have to go back and fix that. Hey, Rodrigo, how's it going? I didn't, haven't uh, seen your name flash up before. In case you guys don't know, Mr. Rodrigo is a low poly SketchUp artist. Does really cool stuff with uh, Low poly. Maybe we'll have to do a, a low poly, poly modeling sometime. Um, you couldn't watch, of course, Rodrigo, because I would just destroy what you call art and make it a thing that happens on accident. Um, all right, let's bring this down to four floors instead of three. So you guys are picky. All right, um, I'm just going to verify this real quick. Oops. Two. Three, four. Okay, I'm gonna grab the bottom one and delete it. Grab these three, slide them down vertically. Turn that off. Again, slide it down vertical. Uh, what? It's round. I don't. Hold, hold up now. All right, so I'm gonna select this. Scale, drag it, whoa, that's the wrong handle. Yeah, there we go, there's our handle. Drop that down to there. Drop 
that down there. That down there. And drop that down there. Blame math for that, but we're good to go. All right. Um, this is actually round because here, here's here's why I say that because these obviously are not round. The rest of it could be round, but this part's obviously a. Uh, this part's obviously got these panels, so I think this is octagon, but the rest of this could could well be round. Um, all right, Jimmy. Here's what I'm gonna do. I will take this section, make it round, but I feel pretty confident in saying that this right here is an octagon. So, I'm going to grab this stuff. Yes. All right, so I'm gonna grab this, make that a group. Grab this, make it a group. And then I can paste this into the middle again. And then I'll put a circle back to here. Spaces to start with. Close the bottom up. This is also like uh, I think this is a deck, isn't it? Like this is actually going to be pushed down the inside. Let's actually take this. By that. <laughs> All right, let's come in here. So, like I said, this is going to offset a little bit and then push down a little ways. Something like that. I think that's like a guardrail type thing up there. Um, I think we got the same thing. Something like that's happening out here too. But I don't know. Right now, what I'm gonna do is try to figure out how to do this thing. This this cool looking uh, detail right here. Um, and now that I did it, I'm kind of thinking I should have done it totally differently. Let me get back to here. Um, because I kind of think we got something like this going on. And then this. All right, so I'm going to grab these two pieces for a second. Copy them. And then come out over here. Because right, I believe if this is at 45 degrees, if I turn this like this, this is actually what we're looking at right there. So, 
so. I more believe. I more believe. I'm pretty sure that's that's a more accurate statement, I believe, than I more believe. I think what we're looking at is something like that. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take that and make that a group temporarily. Come in here and delete that. Here, paste that. Whoa, what are the abs? No, I don't think that snapped exactly right, but yeah, we'll horizontally snap the midpoint there. Snap here. Midpoint, there we go. So I think that is what we got going on as opposed to that skinny rectangle just there. Now, what happens? I stop doing that. It exploded. Um, so if we look at They do, they kind of angle out. These wing things. I have no idea what I'm doing right now, by the way, guys. So so that's why I'm not explaining because I don't know what's happening. <laughs> so please don't be offended that I'm just clicking in silence. guys come back I don't, I don't know something like that all right so I just needed some I need some reference here I'm gonna copy that out and slap that we I don't even know what to do with this freaking out man all right so it seems like it make the most sense to come down so this this top section comes down and make this a group and then use that as a reference on this. So that this uh, angled section right here is right here. And it looks like that kind of what I feel like is an arbitrary angle coming out. Like it goes back this way. I don't know exactly what that, that angle dimension is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do half of that. Oops. All right, so I'm gonna take that right there, take that all the way up, and then I'm just gonna grab this point right here and drop it vertically to here. All right, that gives me kind of this, actually looks like it does push down just a teeny bit. Something like that. And then for these next pieces that are grouped temporarily, it looks like they kind of come out on either side. So it looks like they're almost like a push-pull shape. So 
So I'll just trace a rectangle on either side, push pull it out. Oh, go with a foot, <laughs> see what happens. I'm just going to block it off like that. Something like that. And then, and then we get open to interpretation. Um, I'm gonna go, I'm going to go to my draw tools and I'm going to grab my Bezier curve, come a little ways back here, drop all the way to the uh, no, it's like it's like part way down, go halfway. All right, something like that. Push that back in. I'm gonna take that line, and continue this line out, continue this line out, and I'm gonna take this shape right here and copy it with uh, rotate to the other side. So I can push this back in. So I got the, that first one up here. And I'm trying to figure if I make that a group, can I reuse that? Let's see what happens. So if I grab it, and I'm just gonna start by dropping it down here. And then okay, that was a little much. I didn't need to pull it out quite that far, but let's uh, let's try half that. So I'm gonna go from the middle point here, pull it out to here, middle point here, and pull it out to here. Yeah, kind of like that. All right, I'm gonna close this up and get rid of this. All right, one more. I'm gonna drag that down. Option vertical to here. And same thing, I'm gonna use the same reference points right here. Pull that out this way. Pull that out this way. Take that. They do look like they come out a little bit further than that, huh? All right, I'm gonna actually pull them out where they were before. Um, yeah, Google Earth would be, would be not a bad thing to reference. Uh, Ian's throwing some more pictures up here for me. Yeah, that doesn't, that's uh, actually not too uh, terribly far off. It does look like they come out a little bit, they look, they come out a lot farther than they look like they do in this 2D, 2D version. They actually look like they stick out even further than that. I'm, I'm happy with what that is though. <laughs> um, so this is this is round two. That's that's interesting. All right, we'll uh, we will we'll round that up. So I'm gonna grab these these pieces right here. Actually, no, hold up. I'm not gonna copy them yet because I gotta I gotta do something about the stuff that falls on the inside. Let's, let's make this a solid, and then we can just chop it off. It goes up past that even. 
All right. Um, just trying to get these above above ground, or well, above floor, really, is what I'm shooting for. All right, so I'm gonna push that up there. Now with this one, so I can grab just this surface and pull it down to the face here. This one, because it actually goes past the arc and cuts it off, so I'm gonna actually take all that geometry, intersect face with model, and then I can grab that and delete it. All right, so now I can grab these three pieces. I'm gonna make that a separate group, and then I can come up here Option copy 90 degrees, X3. I don't know, it looks stubbier or something. Something is making leaving me unsatisfied about that, but that's where that's that you know. You know what I'm saying? Alright, um <laughs> right here, let's see. Well, I'm just going to draw a line straight down and straight over and get rid of all that. Oop. Paste in place. And now I can grab the circle. So let's weld that first. And now I can grab the circle, follow me, spin that around. Um, I don't need this geometry anymore. All right, so there is our Empire State Building, mostly. Um, I know they're different, but I'm going to throw just these same windows right in here. Uh, cause I want something here. I can't, that, that bare white strip just doesn't work for me. So I'm just gonna grab our, our standard front elevation window. I want to align it to this point right here. Scale it vertically. Copy. Ooh, 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 ooh. That looks nice. Um, all right, so I can actually grab. Man, that was that was pretty close. Look at that. I'll pull that out there, and I'm going to. I don't want to do bother with quarters. But I am going to take uh, these five pieces and I'm just going to rotate them from the middle around to the other side. And then I'll grab another one of these. Whoops. Ah. <laughs> Can't snap to 90. Every time it snaps at 90, I move my hand a little bit to snap it off of there. All right, there we go. Scale down again, scale down here, take that. Option copy over. Mm, not quite as close, but. Scale that back in. I'll take those and same thing, I'll use the same middle line. Copy, option, rotate, there we go. Then triple click rid of that and then I'm just gonna like it to pour it kind of cheat again and I don't need it it's not following a weird H shape it's just a uh, rectangle on the inside reverse that face select just the edges and turn them off uh oh I did I did a bad thing
copied that over, I did not copy it straight. Is it, it's not, nope, aha. There we go. You know, you get that last, uh, that last run, that last bit you gotta get done and you just start kind of uh, maybe not being quite as precise as you know you should be. I think, uh, I think that's what happened right there. <laughs> like, yay, no more windows to copy and I got excited and uh, I, I got a little sloppy there. All right, let's try it again. Turn that off, just hide those edges. Not too bad. And there is, this goes up another, I don't know, somebody looked that up and figured, how long is the, uh, the actual spire on the, offset that somewhat. It's, it's big, I mean, it, this, this is like another bunch of feet tall. If anybody has that information, uh, let me know what that is. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna pull that up. Yeah, I'll, I'll get right on that interior. I'll, I'll post on 3D Warehouse and you, you knock that out for me. How's that, that sound, sounds, sounds better to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a 3D print though. The 3D print could be kind of fun. That could be uh, not too bad. Um, yeah, that's that's very good looking. Um, yeah, how's a? Uh, well, we've had some people saying hi, so I apologize. I was I was in the zone there, especially with that uh, the top mooring section. Oh boy, hot corners just started my screensaver, and we're back. Okay. <laughs> uh, I just missed a couple of hellos. Um, Philip Greenslade uh, asked about uh, purchasing. Um, yeah, I would, I would suggest our website for that sort of thing. We don't really talk about, we don't sell much during the live stream. So check out sketchup.com. You can find more about purchasing a copy of uh, Sketchup there. Um, middle section of the mass, three windows each side, 45 degrees. Oh, okay. Um, that's, that's, we could do something like that. Um, Saputra is coming from Indonesia. How's it going? Um, Manuel, I think is from Brazil and posted a question in what looks to be Portuguese perhaps, but I don't speak that. So um, all I can say is, hey, thanks for coming by. Thanks for the comment. Um, <laughs> Hamid, we're mod modeling everything in SketchUp. Uh, Mr. Dog, uh, one somebody actually asked early on, what about doing a, a photo projection, and that is something that absolutely we could do. Um, there are extensions, Mr. Dog was asking specifically about um, UV mapping. There are tools out there that let you do UV mapping. Um, I haven't spent much time with UV mapping, to be totally honest. Um, I know a lot of people do it. I'm not one of those people, though. So it is possible to UV map, uh, but not something that, that I could do right this second. Um, yeah, so we could see, Gamborg asked how many windows. So just for fun, so you can see, like I said, this is, this is a pretty snappy model. I'm actually not feeling with everything visible right now. Uh, I'm not feeling any lag or any, any yes, Bradley, thank you. Um, I'm not feeling any lag or delay as I'm zooming around. Not, not really seeing that. Uh, let's see if I turn on hidden. Nope, looks like it's maybe a teeny bit slower on the 3D mouse, but yeah, there's, there's 
really nothing there. Uh, so if we go to model info, let's take a look at what, what makes up what it takes to make an Empire State Building. So we got, it's not too big, about 70,000 faces, uh, 216,000 edges. There were 4,000 component instances. So I'm guessing right around there, around uh, 4,000 of those. We can actually go check specifics because we only had, see here down at the end, right, we had, we had this one, which was a special, uh, or no, do we make an end one? I can't remember if we made one on the end or if we, nope, oh, front elevation window corner, we did. So there's this one, there are 20 of those. We have this half one, which you used 800 of, and then the standard window ended up being 3,132. So yeah, just shy of uh, around 4,000 windows. Not including anything from the above the penthouse. Um, all right, Bradley did check and said that the real building <laughs> is 1,454 feet. So let's, uh, let's drop a line right here and see how close we came to the real height. Ooh, look at that. So that was 14,042. Well, man, I can pretty much just add another 10 foot to that spire. Let's, let's get some more antenna going here. Let's uh, make this look a little more realistic. We'll take, actually here, let's do this first. Come over here, we'll go straight up. What was it? One, four, five, four. Try that again. One, four, five, four feet. <laughs> All right. So that is the full height. I'm going to do this because it looks like, when you look at the picture of it, this uh, this thing right here maybe does something like like this, changes, changes size a couple times. Um, there we go. That is now officially the proper height. More or less, maybe. We copied a picture I found on the internet, so we we're working off the best possible references. Um, <laughs> our, our vertical references may have been a little bit dubious. I don't know where that illustration came from. I felt pretty good about the profiles of the floors, though, from the original drawings. That was kind of cool. What would have been really neat would have been to find a full set of the original drawings and work off of those. That would have been super cool, but uh, that's not what happened. That is, that is not what we did. Um, yeah, that looks pretty, pretty cool. Um, awesome. So yeah, thank you for that Bradley design. That helped. Um, rendering would be possible. Actually, rendering wouldn't be too bad because one of the things we could actually do, because these are components, I could actually come in here and I could grab like uh, a concrete texture something like that, and I could actually come in here and fill in these faces with that concrete texture, and then if I had a reflective glass material, the only, it, the only renderer I have right now, by the way, is Thea, which isn't, isn't working in my installation right this second. But uh, here, let's do this for fun. Let's go grab glass and we'll throw in a, uh, the sky. We'll throw the sky in. Put that 
concrete in here. And because we only used three components, I only got to I only got to paint three components. Oops, didn't I didn't get the underside in the last one. One more, which is my half. And then the window. And that is like 90 some percent of that, that building. So the only things I'd have to come in here with uh, to paint would be these pieces right here. And I'm painting, dang, I'm painting the outsides. This is not the proper procedure. I'm off, I'm off plan right now. Look away. <laughs> awesome. And then uh, of course up here, I don't know, all kinds of stuff happens up here. Um, it looks like there's even like gold or brass or I don't know. And look at these these pictures that uh, Ian just threw up, just posted. Why do I keep saying throw up? Oh boy. Is it any bigger? Nope, that's not much bigger. Actually, it kind of looks like they're like metallic. So it looks like this bottom section maybe. This is all kind of concretey looking, but this. All of these pieces look more like they're kind of silvery. I don't know. And then just all kinds of things happen from there on up. We're going we're to throw silver on the whole thing. But yeah, there we go. I'm okay with that. It looks nice. Of course, it looks terrible against our, our tan or our uh, <laughs> off gray background. doesn't look as impressive. So there, there we go. Get some sky behind. That helps. Yeah, so, oh, and look, this doesn't happen very often, but Mark hung out through the entire project. Usually Mark leaves pretty close to starting this thing up, but uh, yeah, this time he, he hung out. Here, you know what, you, 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 my friend, The observation deck for you. Keep an eye out for blimps. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, oh, we do have one, one piece right here. Oh, all those little those little uh, placeholders that I put in there are gonna have. Uh, I didn't make them components, so they're gonna they're gonna stick out like sore thumbs. Since I made these components, I should only have to do one side. And this side over here is, is finished also because, again, because it's a component. Yeah, that turned out all right. Yeah, see, we got Mark Kong up here. So, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's good enough. <laughs> yeah, so there we go. Um, man. Hot dog cart does sound pretty good right now. Oh, did I not make these components? I might not have made the bottom section a component. Oh, I did, and I made it a group. Oh, come on, man. All right, well, that's easy to fix. Delete, delete. 
complete make component. See, that it just happened again. Even though I'm working so hard on getting better at using flip along, when I don't think about it, I just scale to negative one. It's just, it's just a thing I do. All right, this time I'm being intentional. Right click, flip along, red direction. All right, and then I can drag that. Throw it right there. Boom, all right, now we're good to go. So. Like I said, the big thing here was really it's the Empire State Building. That's why I need Matt here. With the but the, uh, the big thing, though, is that component modeling. Because it's a component, um, I could come in at any point, add additional uh, detail, anything like that. Because the way I went through and scaled real quickly, I was able to build it up very quick. Uh, the whole, the bulk of the building was, you know, around two hours. Um, but you could come back at any point now if you wanted to. If I, you did want to put additional detail in, or, or say this top course, you know, you wanted to go put those the cap details that they had in the in the on the building. You could just take just this section right here and grab just these and make them unique, right across just that one one uh, component. Or take this one back up. Take this component, make it unique and then go in and make those components inside unique, and then you could put that cap detailing around. It would go all the way around there. Then you could actually take that cap detailing, less talky, more dewy. Let's, let's just do it real quick. So I take this, make unique, come in here, grab all of these, right click, make unique again. Now I could go in to do something like, um, Let's do something like this. I don't remember what that, that detail looks like, but I'm gonna do something like, like that. Copy it over like that, and then pull this out. We'll take that then. Something like that and see it's all the way across there the ones that weren't changed were the ones that were the exception so this one that I had I called corner I didn't stick to that that uh, method very long the only place I put corners on was the first floor and this one called the end didn't get that same detail um, but you do that and then what you could do then is you come into the next one you take that top one again make unique Come in here, grab them, right click, make unique. And now I could come in here and select these components. And now I could come in here and right click, so in my component browser, find that one with the arch, right click and hit replace selected. And what it will do is it'll put that geometry in there and because I scaled the outside of the component, rather than going in and creating special geometry, it's gonna grab that same geometry. It's gonna scale it, so it'll, it'll squish it or stretch it depending on the size there. But then I get that same top detail that I have down here. So again, because it's components with that make unique, you can actually go through, and I did that wrong. I should have just done it to these two and not these ones over here. Hey, but simple enough, right? Because I come back in here, select these ones, and re-replace re them with front elevation window, which will go back to square. Now the only ones that held that are the ones on the end. So, yeah, 
Components are pretty cool. Components can save you a lot of time. Um, this workflow, obviously, <laughs> this was a weird one because I'm making something that is already exists and is probably pretty well documented, though they probably don't share. I think there's probably security reasons to not share your plans for a big commercial building, you know? So um, that makes sense to me, not arguing with that. Um, but uh, where this would work a lot is if you're actually doing that design. The initial concept model might just be those blocks that we started with. Remember we started with just push pulling some shapes, bring them in, make them symmetrical, pull them up, and then going in and adding detail and add another. So people use the term level of detail. That could actually get involved here where first is the, the, the blocks, then we're going to put pieces for the windows and then go in more and more detail. Eventually these components might not repeat. They may actually become, you know, I don't know what, how many different size windows are on the Empire State Building, but I might have a different component for each one. Each component then might be broken down into glass versus the header versus the columns. All that could happen inside the component. So how much detail you want to go from here, that's kind of up to you. You can do as, as much or uh, as little as you want as you start to build that out and put more detail in. Um, so hopefully that you guys like that. That was, a, that was a fun one. Be honest. I didn't really think about this too much until this morning. I grabbed some, I grabbed some drawings, some the couple of the, the elevation drawings, I pulled those down and that was pretty cool. But uh, <laughs> it didn't occur to me that I needed a lot more information than what I had uh, until this morning around nine o'clock. So yeah, it, it turned out pretty well considering the, uh, I may not have been quite as prepared as I have been for some of the others. Uh, but yeah, that turned out uh, that turned out all right. That's a, a good Empire State Building. Um, yeah, let me know. Uh, again, we're kind of at the point where we're done. We're about three hours in, which is about where we're at. Um, it is it is generally pretty surprising. I don't keep a good eye on the clock. I'll be honest. I start modeling and I kind of stop thinking. It's one or the other. So. Um, it kind of surprises me how often we're right around 3, 3.30 we're wrapping up. So uh, yeah, that was actually quicker than some of the, the 3D modeling sessions we've had. Um, you know, Bradley Design just asked, I wonder if the original design would have changed much if the architect had had SketchUp in his toolbox. I wonder that about classic design because, you know, even going further, further than that, like if you go back to like real classic architecture, you know, like Roman or Greek architecture and look at that kind of stuff. It blows my mind to think that they drew on a piece of paper and to make decisions on how stuff was going to go, which I get. I mean, that's what we do now, right? We draw, we draw 3D models, whatever, but they were making decisions on where they were going to put like thousand pound chunks of marble. So personally, if I'm going to go have some people move around some thousand pound chunks of marble, I'd like to have a 3D model of that rather than just 2D drawings. Just saying, you know, maybe they were more gifted, I don't know. But uh, yeah, once you get into that whole, your building materials could kill people, I like to have double check with 3D models at that point. Um, <laughs> so anyhow, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, L Lawrence wants me to, says we got time for Model King Kong. I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it a little early this Friday. I'll post this up to 3D Warehouse though. So Lawrence, you are more than welcome to download and get your King Kong on yourself. I, I would be, I would love to see it. So again, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. That was a blast. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me uh, this Friday. This was great. Uh, it was just you and me this time. We had nobody else, no Matt, no Michelle, no Kara. It was just us. So it was an intimate time and I appreciate that. Uh, next week, so we are trying, like I mentioned, we're trying to get a little bit ahead. I still want your guys' ideas. I still gonna we can chat a little bit. You guys can throw out uh, some ideas, and we'll leave the chat running for a little while after we sign off. Um, let us know of other ideas in the forum. Hop on the forum. There's a bunch of threads already going about what we should model on on uh, on Fridays. But uh, if you had specific issues, questions, comments, whatever, go ahead and throw them up on the Empire State Building uh, thread. If not, if there's other ones, like I said, there, there's two going right now. What should we model Friday that you could throw your ideas up there? But like I said, we're trying to get ahead a little bit. So I can actually tell you now what we're gonna model next week. So this is, we're, we're evolving, we're getting better at this thing. So next week you come back, I found some awesome plans 
for a Fender Stratocaster. So we're gonna actually model, 3D model in SketchUp an entire guitar, which would be, I think will be pretty cool. That'll be a, a lot of fun, that'll be a good one. It's, it's got some compound shapes, some curves, uh, but everything's very precise. We have, like I said, we have actual, the actual plans for, for the uh, entire body and all the parts. So that'll be a fun one. So come back next Friday, noon, right here, and we'll start modeling a guitar in 3D. Until then, we can hang out and chat for a little bit, maybe a couple more minutes, and, uh, and then I'll let, release you all to your whatever you're doing. So hopefully, I don't know if anybody has any fun plans this weekend. Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, like I said, if you have ideas, go ahead and throw them up. Throw, again, throw up, again. I don't know why I'm doing. Go ahead and post them. Go ahead and put them in the comments. I don't have to keep saying throw up. I don't know why that happens. Ooh, hopefully that's not like foretelling the future or something like that. That's, that would be bad. All right, well, thank you guys. If I uh, appreciate you coming by, El Tell. Thank you very much. Lawrence, thank you. Bradley Design, uh, appreciate you coming by. Especially, like I said, it's awesome you guys who are <laughs> tuning in at 2 a.m. That's crazy. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, for the most part, uh, you know, I think we're wrapped up, so I'm gonna head out. I have never feel fully satisfied saying goodbye on these things. I always wanna kinda hang out and like, I don't know, like stand at the door and shake everybody's hand as they leave kinda thing, I don't know. but. Uh, Hopefully you guys had a good time and uh, I'll see you next week. Thanks a lot.